Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yabashai, Bayashim, Raka Kodash, Barakatom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, this glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh, Bayashim, Yabashai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well, and peace and salutations to Yahakim out there pushing this word in truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you brothers endure until the end. This is the brother Raya with another video, and I'm going to start it off with Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. And I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I will answer when I am reproved. And Yahweh answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. And that's what the men of the Lord, chiefly through GMS or Great Millstone, are doing by going out there on the highways and byways preaching this word, as well as putting up video epistles like this to first and foremost warn you Israelites or you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans what's about to take place and what's going to happen to you if you don't come back into your power, and also to give judgment unto the rest of these nations. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. And what is this vision that is not tarrying, but is quickly coming to pass? The fact that there's going to be a nuclear-armed World War III, and that America, which is biblically known as Babylon the Great, is going to be destroyed by not only 200 million nuclear missiles, but it's going to get hit by the laser beams from the chariot of the Most High, which people ignorantly refer to as so-called UFOs, and it's going to turn the United States into the biblical lake of fire from sea to shining sea, and afterwards it's going to become an uninhabitable wasteland. And the scriptures speak of this, that there's going to be a nuclear war, and that there's nothing that will happen to avert it from coming to pass. This is Isaiah 55, verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So no peace treaties or uh, nuclear weapons, bans, or anything like that is going to avert this nuclear war from coming to pass. You people out there need to come to terms with the fact that there is going to be a nuclear war and the majority of you are going to be swept up in it. And that if you're an Israelite, you should be doing whatever you can to get in the good graces of Yahweh by Hashim Yahushai so you can be of that elect number and escape this coming terrible calamity. This is Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Speaking of that nuclear destruction, a perfect example the brothers always like to bring up is the movie Terminator 2 Judgment Day. And I'm going to just read this again real quick. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Here's a gif. The elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the works thereof shall be burnt up. This is Zechariah 14, verse 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith Yahweh will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem, you heathen nations. You Edomites, or so-called Caucasians, you Moabites, or so-called Chinese, you Ishmaelites, or so-called Arabs, the list goes on and on. Their flesh, and also two-thirds of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans who are slated to take part in this judgment with these heathens, their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. The elements shall burn with fervent heat. And here's another gift from Terminator 2, which I'm sure a lot of you people are familiar with. Their flesh shall consume away with fervent heat while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And I'm just laying this groundwork to show you that a nuclear war is in the scriptures 
And again, back in Isaiah 55 and 11, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, because today the US has formally announced its withdrawal from the INF or the Intermediate Nuclear Forces Treaty, which pretty much put which slacky, which pretty much puts both countries on a fast track towards creating nuclear weapons again, which they're gonna use against each other in this coming nuclear armed World War Three. And this is a video from Russia RT America titled Russians dumbfounded as US abandons nuke deal. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. As we mentioned, the U.S. has officially backed out of a long-standing arms control treaty with Russia. You heard it in our conversation that Christy and I were just having. It stokes fears that even a world war could somehow be on the horizon. Which the Trump will. administration says that Russia is to blame for the breakdown in the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, or INF, which saw the two countries stay clear of nuclear conflict. Russia's responded by stating that the U.S. government has hidden its nefarious plans, which called on them to pull out of the treaty. Regardless, of who's at fault. The issue raises serious concerns. We got two parts to the story. First, I want to introduce you to the Russian Deputy Foreign Minister. His name is Sergei Ryabkov, who spoke to RT earlier today. Listen to what he has to say. Uh, on the famous symbolic clock uh, that shows the time left to the nuclear conflict, we have un unfortunately passed yet another minute towards the midnight. We should work deliberately, focusedly. We should invest uh, additional energy and political capital to stop this dangerous development. Everything now depends on responsibility of the U.S. decision makers. Just hours after this statement was made, the Pentagon announced that it will develop new ground missiles, which had been banned under the uh, INF. RT correspondent Yulia Shapovalova has been all over this story. She files this report from Moscow. The Treaty on the Control of Intermediate and Shorter Range Missiles has been terminated at the initiative of the American side. The official statement appeared on the Russian Foreign Ministry's website. The withdrawal from the agreement was also confirmed by U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. On Twitter, he again placed blame on Russia for that. On February the 2nd, 2019, the U.S. gave Russia six months to return to compliance with the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty. Russia refused, so the treaty ends today. The U.S. will not remain party to a treaty when others violate it. Russia bears sole responsibility. This document was signed more than 30 years ago on December 8, 1987 by Mikhail Gorbachev and Ronald Reagan. Thanks to the agreement between the Soviet Union and the United States, a whole class of the most dangerous nuclear weapons was destroyed. Missiles with a flight range of 500 to 5,500 kilometers. Washington announced the suspension of participation in the treaty in February, accusing Russia of non-compliance. The United States and NATO believed that one of Moscow's missiles violated the agreement. They say Russia developed and put into service a 9M729 rocket, which, as it seems to the Americans, flies further than 500 kilometers. Moscow denied it went against the treaty. The Russian Ministry of Defense has repeatedly explained in detail and even showed that missile, saying it fully fits into the framework of the agreement. But the United States refused to accept all the evidence and did not enter into dialogue. Meanwhile, Russia puts forward counterclaims, saying the United States uses long-range strike drones and NATO now deploys launchers capable of delivering Tomahawks missiles in Romania and Poland. They have a range of more than a thousand kilometers and fall under medium-range missiles prohibited by the treaty. Earlier, Donald Trump noted that the United States wants to come to an agreement on control of nuclear weapons. He also discussed this issue by telephone with Vladimir Putin. The UN has also expressed concern. The Intermediate Nuclear Forces Treaty, the INF, is a landmark agreement that helps stabilize Europe and end the Cold War. When it expires tomorrow, the world will lose an invaluable break on nuclear war, and this will likely heighten, not reduce the threat posed by ballistic missiles. China has also warned about the dangers of withdrawal from the treaty. The real intention of the U.S. withdrawal is to make the treaty no longer binding on itself. 
Bringing China into this is just an unreasonable move. China will not accept it. Moscow offers the United States and NATO to declare a moratorium on the deployment of intermediate and shorter range missiles, according to Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Rebkov. A similar step has already been taken by the Russian side. Moscow will refrain from deploying such weapons until the United States installs appropriate systems. Russia showed utmost responsibility for European and global security, declaring through President Putin's statement a unilateral moratorium for fielding of this type of capabilities if and when Russia develops, though uh, until and unless the U.S. does the same anywhere in the world. Now, according to CNN, the Pentagon plans to test a new cruise missile in the coming weeks in response to, according to the authors of the article, Russia's aggression in Europe. The only and key guarantee of global stability now remains the third strategic arms reduction treaty known as START III. This agreement was signed by Russia and the United States in 2010, but in two years, in 2012, 21, the document ends and the United States says it has no intention to extend it. For example, the New START nuclear agreement, which was ratified in 2010, was flawed from the beginning. It did not cover short-range tactical nuclear weapons or new Russian delivery systems. It is due to expire in February of 2021, and while no decision has been made, it's unlikely to be extended. Why extend a flawed system? just to say you have a treaty. For now, it seems the sides should really sit down and think how to make the world more secure. Yulia Shapovalo for the news of Rick Sanchez. In the foreseeable future, nuclear missiles are going to be shot to the four corners of the globe, and it's going to be Russia that's going to lead the rest of the major nations against the United States of America. This is Jeremiah 50 verse 9. For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon, the United States, that whore that sits upon many waters, an assembly of great nations from the north country, Russia, which besides being known as the north country, is also known as the Medes and Gog in the scriptures. And that assembly of great nations includes not only Russia's allies like China, North Korea, and Iran, but the allies of the United States, which are going to turn against it and ally themselves with Russia, such as uh, France, Britain, uh, Germany, South Korea, Japan, Saudi Arabia, you name it. And they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence she shall be taken. Their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. And those arrows are symbolically referring to the nuclear tipped ICBMs because the prophets didn't know what a nuclear missile was when they wrote these uh, scriptures down thousands of years ago. So they described it the best way they could with what they knew at the time, weapons of war, such as arrows, glittering spears, flying swords, you name it. And just to give a little more clarification on Russia being that North country, what's uh, north of the United States, Canada, and the Arctic Ocean, Russia. Here's a map. You've got the Arctic Ocean right here, and you've got Russia north of Canada and the United States. And also you've got Russia and China doing uh, plans together, Salakia. Oh, there's still the map working on plans to economically build up the Arctic Ocean for trade, but Russia's also having military applications in the Arctic Ocean as well. And the United States uh, is planning on building up military installations in Antarctica and the Arctic Ocean too, because this is gonna be a major uh, battlefield in this upcoming nuclear armed World War III, because uh, both country, the Arctic Ocean is on both countries' doorsteps. This is Isaiah chapter 13. I'm going to read verse 17 through 20. Behold, I will stir up the Medes, the Russians, Gog, the North Country, against them, the United States, Babylon the Great, which shall not regard silver and ask for gold. They shall not delight in it. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces. And these bows are referring to the silos that the nuclear missiles are going to be shot out of just like the nuclear missiles are referred to as arrows, bow and arrow, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. Their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. And Babylon, 
the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency shall be as when the Most High overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and how was ancient Sodom and Gomorrah overthrown by fire and brimstone from the sky, and this modern day Sodom and Gomorrah, because besides being known as Babylon the Great in the scriptures, the United States is also known as spiritual Egypt and Sodom as pursuant to Revelation 11 and 8. It's going to be overthrown by that modern fire and brimstone, those nuclear tipped ICBMs. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there, Salakia. So after these nuclear missiles, 200 million of them, and the laser beams from the chariot of the Most High turn the United States in the, into the biblical lake of fire, it's going to be a desolate wasteland afterwards. It's going to stand as a memorial as to what a wicked kingdom looks like and how not to govern the earth. So with this video, I hope you sincere Akim out there were edified. Just uh, keep strong and keep pushing this word. We're almost out of this final wicked captivity. And as always, I'm going to say a Baba Ball, Kwam Yasharala. Till next time, Shalom.